This is Bob Oliphant from the Westford Historical Society and Museum bringing you Episode 3 of Season 4 of the Westford Wardsman Podcast. The Westford Wardsman newspaper was part of Turner's Public Spirit, a weekly newspaper in air a century ago. In this episode, we'll be re- reading The Wardsman for the week ending Saturday, January 21st, 1911, and I'll elaborate on what was happening in Westford that week. The week starts with the About Town section, written by Samuel L. Taylor. The quota of men who have been clearing the roads two rods wide on each side for a training park for moths have finished the Groton Road, thence countermarched to the Oak Hill Road, which has been cleared to its intersection with Brookside and Plain Roads at Edwards Corner. The Brookside Road is nearly completed, and the next move is reported as the Chamberlain Road to Chelmsford Line. The state is doing this work, and knowing that the moths love light rather than darkness, expects to draw them to this open and trap them in netting and then sentence them. This is a reference to the gypsy moths, which would return to Westford in more recent years, as I remember them distinctly. The Blodgett brothers... The Blodgett Brother Boys, so-called, up in the altitude of Millstone Hill, took first leadership in corn raising last season, having raised 1,200 bushels. With this large amount, a husking machine is one of the possibilities of the future to the crop in 1911. They are authority on, quote, how to go ahead and win out, end quote, and that too before many of older experience even turn around to start out. They are wholly Westford, their corn is partly Westford, and the other part, Groton, being on the dividing line. They have the yearly sensation of high and low taxes. Their farm was on the hill leading up to the Millstone Observatory in northwest Westford, and part of the farm uh, extended from Westford over into Groton. George O'Brien has bought out the blacksmith shop of George H. Philbrick at Westford Station. Samuel Ogley has moved into the cottage house opposite the Hamlet Cottage at Brookside and will superintend the spinning department of Brookside Mill when it begins to spin. Authority says that a large order has been received and a spin may be expected about March 1st. William E. Edwards, the youngest of William C. Edwards at Westford Center, was seriously injured while at work with others, lowering a well for Thomas Brown at West Chelmsford, being badly pinched with a crowbar in the attitude of a lever hold. Dr. Dr. Wells attended him and found it necessary to undergo a surgery, surgical operation last week Wednesday. Nothing more serious than what has already developed is anticipated. John H. Decatur, who has been ill for several years and incapacitated from labor, is now suffering from the added restraints of pneumonia. His cheer and courage, ever a strong fort in health and sickness, is still one of the strong defenses against the new intruder. Mrs. Charles W. Whitney on the Lowell Road is seriously ill with pneumonia. Dr. Wells and a trained nurse are in attendance, and the case looks hopeful. Howard Foster, the Committee on Farmers Institute, has changed the date of the Westford Institute from February 1st to Monday, January 30th, owing to the inability of Professor Sears to come on the date originally agreed upon. The selectmen have appointed Frank C. Hildreth, Fred R. Blodgett, and Calvin L. Howard to appraise the town farm property. The appraisal to be held in the town farm Saturday, February 4th, with the usual temptations of one of those Boynton dinners. Uh, Mrs. Boynton, the mistress of the town farm, put on a, a very nice spread for the selectmen when they came to appraise the town farm property. Wallace Johnson has commenced harvesting the remainder of his ice, the thaw having entered after about half of the crop was gathered. I believe he um, took the ice off of a forge pond. A church supper and sociable was held in the vestry of the village church at West Chelmsford on Thursday evening. George Smith of Lowell, organist of the Unitarian Church in Westford, gave an organ recital which caught the ear of those who have an ear to catch. 
our own Walter Steele of Westford done the honors and charming with his skill on the violin. Lowell contributed Miss Miller as reader of fame and name. Apron tables for cleanliness and candy tables for sweets made the program complete. The church has recently added electric lights, hence some stirring nights. Mr. and Mrs. Abile J. Abbott and daughter sailed on Wednesday for India on a pleasure trip, taking their touring car with them. I believe Abile was the president of the Abbott Worsted Company at that time. Mrs. Fred L. Snow on the Tenney Road is in the Lowell Hospital as the result of an operation for appendicitis. Wallace Johnson is thrown out of employment by being thrown off a load of lumber in Lowell. He is as comfortable as could be expected, considering the frozen ground and the uncut ice on Burgess Pond. It is an uneasy time to be thrown at the ice harvest, at the ice harvest season. Uh, the next uh, couple paragraphs are on the Farmers Institute. The next Farmers Institute, given by Middlesex North, will be held in the Town Hall, Westford, on Monday, January 30th. The address, forenoon and afternoon, will be given by F.C. Sears, Professor of Pomology. That's the branch of botany that studies and cultivates fruits. Massachusetts Agricultural Cottage, uh, now known as UMass Amherst. His subject is the pruning of fruit trees, as the writer has been requested to place in the hall several fruit trees representing apple, peach, cherry, and pear trees by which to demonstrate his subject. His other subject is very likely to be, quote, personal experiences and starting an orchard in Massachusetts, end quote. He comes highly recommended as one who will stand the fire line of cross-examination. Let the rural community begin now to prepare to attend this institute. Most of us have not yet arrived in knowledge to the point where we know how to trim a tree and do it so that the future will not have to use a 40-foot ladder to harvest the best apples. Come and learn to raise apples on low-spreading trees. The next uh, section or paragraph is called Recently Gathered. A few additional facts in regard to the obituary of Mrs. Elizabeth Harwood that appeared in last week uh, have recently been gathered from a relative. Although born in Canada, she only lived there a few months and was in no sense a Canadian. Before her marriage, she was Miss Elizabeth Tuttle, her parents residing in both Acton and Littleton, and was closely related to the Tuttles of those towns. She was an aunt to former Vice President Hobart's wife who has been thoughtful and generous towards her in these declining years. The monument at Fairview Cemetery was the gift of Mrs. Hobart. Garrett Hobart was vice president of the United States under President William McKinley from 1897 until Hobart's death while in office in 1899. Next, we have the Westford Center section. Miss Lillian Snow of North Westford, who underwent an operation for appendicitis at the Lowell General Hospital last week, Thursday, is making good progress toward recovery. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Ida M. Gould has been spending the week in Boston. Miss Fisher and her assistant teachers at the Frost School are attending the course of lectures at the Lowell Normal School. These lectures are given under the direction of the State Board of Education, and the teachers in the surrounding towns are expected to attend. The course includes lectures in psychology, history of education, history, and English. The many Westford friends of Mr. and Mrs. John P. Wright will be glad to know that they are once more freed from quarantine regulations. Miss Francis is quite convalescent from her attack of diphtheria, which very fortunately was a mild attack. Miss Mary Morin, Morin and her mother, Mrs. Joseph Morin, have been enjoying a visit with relatives in Providence this week. The regular monthly missionary meeting, which combined with the weekly prayer meeting at the Congregational Church, met through the courtesy of Mrs. Mary E. Fletcher at her pleasant home on Wednesday afternoon with a good attendance. The topic for the afternoon's study was missions in South America, which Miss Loker, the president, had arranged in an interesting manner. Mr. and Mrs. H.V. Hildreth entertained a whist party of young people 
for their sons, Harold and Leon, on Saturday evening. There were four tables arranged for the enjoyment of the game. Miss Pauline Dole attained the highest score of the ladies, and John S. Grieg, the highest for the gentlemen. The Academy baseball team defeated the Ringe Manual Training School team at their game on Saturday afternoon with a score of 15 to 17 at the Academy Gymnasium. The Ringe team is a strong one, and the contest for supremacy was a close one and a great credit to the Westford side. There were many interested spectators present. Rehearsals are in progress for a mock trial for the first meeting of the Grange in February, which promises plenty of fun. The cast includes Samuel Taylor and son, William Taylor. As attorneys, Andrew Johnson will be the judge and a supporting cast of Lesser Lights. The next section is called Surprise Party. One of the most pleasant happenings of the week was the surprise visitation of that jolly group known as the Thimble Club to one of their number on Wednesday evening of this week. The members with their husbands spent a memorable evening with Mr. and Mrs. William L. Woods in their new home on Wednesday evening. The party assembled at the home of Miss Eva Fletcher with the exception of one of their number who had gone earlier with her work and was to all appearances cozily and informally spending the evening with Mrs. Woods when the bell rang and upon going to the door the party of twenty filed in, two gentlemen bringing up the rear with their gift for presentation. Mrs. Woods was completely and genuinely surprised, but with characteristic happy adaptability, made everyone thoroughly welcome. Mr. Woods was out in the neighborhood, and his son Albert was hastily dispatched to say that a man wanted him at once about a horse. When he arrived, another as complete surprise awaited him in finding his home taken possession of by these congenial friends, but he proved the good host as effectually as his wife and gave all a sincere welcome. After a little while, tables were arranged and whist was enjoyed for an hour or two. Refreshments of ice cream and cake with delicious hot coffee were served. It was a great successful evening of informal and spontaneous social ability prompted by mutual goodwill and one that will linger long in the memory of host and guest alike. Mr. and Mrs. Woods sincerely thanked the members for their gift, which was a handsome willow armchair with wing sides and upholstered cushions. Next, we have the Forge Village section. Hanley and Company have had their store wired for electricity, the work being done by Harry Brown of this village. They were primarily a yarn company, I guess. Uh, Mrs. Steele and Mrs. Moran of Westford visited at the home of Mr. and Mrs. Fenimore Morton on Wednesday and Thursday. Tenny Martin of Pleasant Street severely injured her, his foot a week ago while engaged in chopping wood at Marshall Brown's woodlot. The chimney of the house on Pleasant Street, occupied by James Wilson and family, caught fire early on last Thursday morning, but was quickly extinguished before much damage was done. During the period of remodeling of St. Catherine's Church, uh, West Graniteville, services will be held for all parishioners who reside in the village and Abbott Hall at 10.30 a.m. Sundays. Services next Sunday will be conducted by Reverend Edmund T. Schofield, the pastor. Sunday school for the children of the village will be held at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning and will be in charge of Miss Abby Splain. The Daniel Gage Ice Company commenced cutting ice at North Littleton on Wednesday and the ice there is 11 inches in thickness. I think this was on a Spectacle Pond, but I'm not sure. Mrs. Susan Reed of Lowell visited her mother, Mrs. Lucretia Reed, who was still confined to her house by sickness. Miss Olive Prescott of Reading has just returned home after a most enjoyable visit with Miss Grace Lawrence. A gang of men are at work clearing the trees and grounds adjoining the residence of Miss Grace Lawrence and Miss Harriet, Mrs. Harriet Randall. These premises are adjacent to Cameron Park and will certainly add beauty to the park when opened next summer. 
The family of Mr. and Mrs. Miles Collins attended the funeral of Mrs. Martha B. Bailey in North Billerica on Wednesday afternoon. Mrs. Bailey, who was 75 years old, was the mother of Mrs. Miles Collins. Archie Bennett of New York spent several days with his grandfather, Elvin S. Bennett, the past week. The next section is called Supper and Entertainment. The Ladies' Sewing Circle, connected with St. Andrew's Mission, held one of their most appetizing bean suppers in Recreation Hall on Wednesday evening. Supper was served from 6 till 8 o'clock, and the tables were well filled. Those who res were responsible for the success of the supper are Mrs. Richard D. Prescott, Mrs. Henry Catchpole, Mrs. Bert Comey, Mrs. Hugh Ferguson, Mrs. George Sanborn, Mrs. David Lord, Mrs. Nelson Prescott, Mrs. Fernald, and Mrs. J.B. Carmichael. After supper, a most enjoyable entertainment was given under the direction of the Girls' Friendly Society. The program was varied, consisting of songs, music, and readings, and all the numbers were executed in an able manner. The proceeds of the affair will be used for the benefit of St. Andrew's Missions. Next is the Graniteville section. J. Austin Healy has recently purchased the business that has been conducted for the past few years by P. Henry Harrington of this village. A large gang of men in the employ of the Boston and Maine Railroad are now making repairs and alterations on the stone bridge near, west, near the West Graniteville Station. This is on the Acton branch, or what is familiar, familiarly called the Red Line. I believe this is the old red, old stone bridge over Stony Brook um, that is on the red line in this in the vicinity of West uh, Graniteville. Jeremiah Gagnon, a well-known and respected citizen, is critically ill at his home in West Graniteville. Edward Leland is confined to his home by a severe illness. Many members of the Holy Name Society of St. Catherine's Church attended the union meeting of the Holy Name Societies that was held in St. Patrick's Church in Lowell on Sunday evening. At both Masses at St. Catherine's Church on Sunday morning, Rev. M. E. Doherty announced that beginning next Sunday, Mass would be celebrated in Healy's Hall at 9 o'clock to be followed by Sunday School. At Abbott's Hall, Ford's Village Sunday School will commence at 10 o'clock to be followed by Mass at 10.30. This arrangement will continue until further notice, the change being made in order to make the necessary repairs and alterations at St. Catherine's Church. The regular meeting of Court Graniteville, Foresters of America, was held in their rooms on Thursday evening. The many people of this village who attended the Fireman's Ball in Groton last Saturday night speak in glowing terms of the fine music, excellent supper, and general good time. That's the news in Westford for the week ending January 21st, 1911. Thank you for listening, and thanks to Ryan Cousins of Westford Cat for providing technical support. You can find transcriptions and podcasts from the Wardsman at our website at Westford Museum at westford.museum.org, or visit the Historical Society's Facebook page for more Westford news from days gone by. This is Bob Oliphant, and I hope you will join us for next week's Westford Wardsman podcast. Thank you.